next one. Instagram. Instagram. Instagram, we just joined Instagram like less than two years ago. I love Instagram. In less than two years, we have over 10,000 followers. Um, one of my words of advice is like, you want to play well with the key players. So you want to be friends with Google. You want to be friends with Facebook. Why? Because they're like the largest social media technology companies out there. You want to be friends with them. You don't want to be enemies, okay? Well, Facebook owns Instagram. You want to play well on Facebook. You want to play well on Instagram um, just because you don't want to be enemies with them. Same thing with Google. If you, you know, you're on Google+, Plus, you're on YouTube, which is owned by Google. Google's the largest search engine in the country, in the world. Um, so by being friends with them and like actively playing a role on their different networks, you rank higher in the search results. <coughs> and social media is actually playing, playing a role in the search engine results, which helps your website, helps you be discovered, helps you with all kinds of things. Um, one of the great things about Instagram is uh, it's easy and a quick way to build a following, and it's hashtag driven. We're going to talk a little more about hashtags. I know some of you guys are like, oh, hashtags, those things drive me nuts. Like, hashtag, I can't stand hashtags. That's not how it works. Okay? Hashtags actually have a great purpose and they can help you build your following. Um, so Instagram, I think it's great for race teams, drivers, motorsports businesses. Twitter, Twitter's another great, great one, okay? And I know so many people might have heard the news, oh, Twitter's going out of business, tweet, 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 tweet. Okay? <laughs> like, seriously, Twitter is like one of the greatest things ever. And maybe, you know, the shareholders, whatnot, they'll sort that out. But in the meantime, it's a great social media network for people to engage with their audience, be discovered, discover other pages, and be followed. Um, and it also is hashtag driven. So there's another great thing on there. It's called Tweet Chats. Has anyone ever heard of a Tweet Chat? It is, like, super cool. So when I was, so I was in college, and, you know, I was really pumped about marketing. Man, you know, the social media market. When I was in college, they were not teaching social media as a marketing tool. They said it was a fad, it will be gone. Well, boy, were they wrong, and I could not wait to see my professor in a couple of years, right? So, there's these things called tweet chats, and pretty much it's just a chat with like minded people, and they're having a conversation about different topics. Usually they're weekly or monthly. And so, one of them was like an SM chat, social media chat, or marketing chat, or biz chat. So, there's all these different ones that you could. Um, belong to or participate in, and they're free, and you can meet other people with similar interests, hobbies, racing, cars, you know, whatever. So, check it out. I really, again, I think it's great for race teams and driver profiles. So, other networks that we don't have time to get into detail, but I think, you know, you guys should pay attention to these. Google Plus. Google Plus is boring by all means, all right? Nobody's like, it's not like Facebook, it's supposed to be Google's Facebook. YouTube. Video is huge. We are in 2017 right now, and if I had to make a prediction about the biggest trending thing that's going to happen this year, it's live video, and it's everything video. You know, we're in a video and visual world now. Um, so keep that in mind. LinkedIn, LinkedIn is not like Facebook, so don't be taking pictures of what you had from lunch today and putting them on there. Chances are a lot of people are going to be like, you know, save that for Facebook, you know, that sort of kind of thing over there. Um, Great for like resume, career driven, best for driver profiles in my opinion. Uh, everything is pretty much hashtag driven except for LinkedIn and it's almost like LinkedIn is, is like a phone charger for the last decade of iPhones. They're, that phone charger is different every year for every iPhone, okay? So I think LinkedIn's kind of heading in that artsy fartsy direction where they just want to be different. One day they will see the light and accept these hashtags. My Again, we just talked about hashtag driven. Um, use hashtags that are relevant to your brand. You should be using hashtags that are similar to the keywords that you want to be found for on your website, the keywords that you want people to associate your brand with. So car chicks, we always use team car chicks, car chicks, racing, automotive, motorsports, and depending on the post, we'll probably throw in there women in motorsports or RP Expo if it was about this event this weekend. So kind of think about that. Um, don't, you know, don't put too, too much crazy detail in the hashtags like, you know, hashtags, I hate wearing white after I eat pizza on a rainy day. Nobody's going to search that, you know what I mean? So kind of think about that. I mean, it's kind of funny. Every now and then I do it about my dog, like, you know, why do I buy new socks, hashtag. Um, 
But yeah, you're probably the only one that does it. So hash tags are also great for you to discover different people and ideas with similar interests and also for people to discover you. So next time you go on like Facebook or Twitter, instead of searching someone's name, search a hashtag. Search hashtag racing. Search hashtag drag racing. Search hashtag NHRA and see what pulls up. You're gonna find that you will pull up people that are talking and interested in the same things that you are. And you wanna be friends with them, it's called network. Social media network, and it's like a genius idea. Uh, it works at most, almost all major social media networks except for LinkedIn. They'll, they'll come around eventually, okay? Sorry. Yeah. This is like the longest I stood up in six days. <laughs> All right, so what makes a post work? Every post, you should have a link to your website, a hashtag of your keywords, and a call to action, meaning learn now, read now, shop now, you know, take action now, buy now, you know, some sort of call to action. Why? because you're gonna drive traffic, build links, and awareness. My whole thoughts with the website and the social media, it's like an evolving circle. So you have your content generating machine, which is your website. Then you take that information and you share it on social media directly from there. And then that social media post should be sending people right back to your website to buy or make a purchase decision. So it's a complete evolving circle that just never ends. Um, so again, this was a post Meet Miss February, Kirchhoff's calendar, Phoebe Wayman, uh, link to learn about her, hashtags, post directly to our website. So that's just an example, and I'll show you how this works. It's one of our most recent po per, uh, posts, sorry. We simply cancel Valentine's Day and make it race car day. <laughs> Sound like a good idea? Yeah. I know it's like a goofy like little post, just something kind of silly, right? And a thousand, about a thousand people clicked on the post on the Car Chicks page, right? Wow, a thousand, holy cow. That's nothing. It's not about the likes. Over 349,000 people saw that post. And not only did they see the post about this goofy Valentine's Day guy, they saw it was Car Chicks, they saw the website, and they saw their keywords. That's what's important. It's the reach, it's not the likes. So when you can, you know, see the other stuff. So. There was like you know over 8,000 share or shares. Some people got angry. 18 people were angry. No, maybe someone's like, you better not be canceling Valentine's Day. You know? I don't know. You know, um, but to have almost a half a million people see it, and it didn't cost me any money. I mean, what kind of what kind of advertising can you do or marketing can you do that can deliver that kind of ROI that's trackable? Anybody? Because I, I can't think of anything. I mean, this seriously took me two seconds. Look at the guy, you know? So. <laughs> That's Giorgio Sukilos from the uh, series Ancient Aliens. It's the Russians, right? Is that where it's from? Oh. Okay. Well, I don't know. I think I saw a bunch of Russians. It's funny. Russians, Valentine's Day, it all works. Um, <laughs> so, again, social media, it's not about the likes. So, here's my girl, Tampa Sizemore. She was in her calendar in 2016, Miss December. She drives uh, a blue Mustang. Blue Mustang? Okay. Um, so this post only got 64 likes. She's like, ooh, 64 likes, right? But almost 18,000 people saw it. Which, what's more important? How many people saw it? Some people don't like stuff. You know, I know my fiance, he sits there every day, he never posts anything, but the guy's on there every day, you know? <laughs> He never posts anything. Maybe he'll like something if it's really good. But you know, that many people saw it. So to me, that's spectacular. So that's where it's at. It's at, it's at the reach. It's not at the likes. Um, so don't be, don't be, um, don't be like, don't feel bad if your post doesn't get a lot of likes because you know, 5,000 people can see it. That's that's a good day in my book. So there's something to think about. All right, timing is oops. Oh no. Oh no. We were on such a good roll. You know what? This isn't going to work because it's a video. Let's try it. All right. Come on, buddy. Yeah, it's not going to work because it's a video. So if you missed earlier, um, my laptop apparently was too new. 
And we had to transfer everything to an older laptop, and who knows, it's like a miracle this is working right now, so we think, we think everything's flipped. So we had to pass up two slides, but they were kind of important. Um, one of the things is timing is everything, and so is consistency. The worst thing that you can do with your Facebook page is to be posting regularly, and then all of a sudden for a month or two, just totally stop posting. Because you have like your seniority level on Facebook just went straight down to the ground, man. Like you've lost all of your engagement. You've lost everything that you have been working for on this page. Just to go cold, cold turkey and come back, you're, you're coming back sweeping the floors. Like you're in the pits. You're like starting from the bottom up again. So the worst thing that you can do is just totally stop posting. Consistency is key. You want to be consistent. Um, and for the best times to post, and it's in your analytics. So if you have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, um, any any of it, like pretty much all the major social media networks, there's something called either insights or analytics or you know something with data. And for Facebook, for instance, which was part of the video, is that you can go up to the, um, the insights, click post, and it will show you when your people are online. When do you want to post? You want to post when your people and your audience are online. So everybody's is different. There is no cookie cutter approach. So if you talk to somebody and without even reviewing their, your analytics, they say the best time for you to post is at 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock, they have no idea what they're talking about. Just walk away because you're going to lose brain cells talking to that person, okay? So the best time to post is when your audience is online and you can find it yourself and your insights. It's free information. Use it. There's, everyone's will be different depending on when your audience is online. So that's when you want to post. Um, how to play the game. I like to refer to social media as the big game of tennis. Okay, this sounds crazy. I've never played tennis, but I know it goes something like this. You know, I hit the ball, they hit the ball, I hit the ball, okay? So you, like, meaning you need to play well with others. You need to play with the other team, man. You need to play with the other pages. So, as card chicks, you know, I'll talk to uh, Lady Horsepower. They're like an all-girl racing team out in the Caribbean, right? So I'm talking to them with my page. They're coming in back with their, their page. What they're doing, we're engaging with each other and bringing each other up. You want to work with the other pages to bring each other up. And you can tell who's got a good marketer on their team because they will engage back with you. Um, otherwise, you're just going to keep on hitting the ball by yourself. No one's going to hit it back, and you're not going to move up. You're just going to be sitting there like Lonely Sally just... Just keep posting and no one's posting with you, man. So engage, comment with people, get people talking. Uh, all right, so now we're on this page. So how to play the game. So weddings, what is it? Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. You knew that? Wow, you guys knew that? That's good. I'm actually pretty impressed. The guy said that, by the way. <clears throat> so, uh, so social media, in my mind, is something kind of similar. Like, Jeanette, what do I post? What do I post? I have no idea. Well, this is what you should do. You don't, you don't want to sit there with the microphone like, buy for me, buy for me. That's the absolute worst thing that you want to do. You should be posting something about you. Like, if you had to post four things today, I don't recommend everyone leave here. Just go post four things. But let's say you posted four things today. You post something about you, something industry-related, something of someone else's, which is like an industry leader, and then maybe something funny. You know, something personal or whatever. You know, or say you want to post, you only want to post four times a week, okay? First post, something about you. The next day you post, something industry related. You know, and so on and so forth. Um, again, another great thing, comment on other people's pages using your page. Does anyone know who Amari King is? You know who that is? Amari King? I love that man. And you know what? <laughs> Let me tell you something. You know what he does? He, and you can see it, you'll be watching like NBC Chicago or some other celebrity or random person's page, and he has, is commenting with his verified page on other people. You see him with the blue check mark, he's got like a thousand likes commented five minutes ago. I mean, not only does the man have an opinion, but he's also doing that to build up his brand. He's building up his page. Emory King, my man. So he doesn't know it yet. Um, <laughs> but engage and respond, ask your audience questions. And when your audience actually starts commenting on your stuff, respond to them. Have a conversation with them, just like you know you and I are talking. You know that's the best way to start building people and building conversations and building engagement. That's what it's about. Sorry, I get a little fired up. 
So here's some free tools to help. These are tools that I use. I use a lot of different ones, but these are the ones that I think have been most beneficial to me. Um, one of the things people say, Jeanette, I don't have time to sit on Facebook all day and post all this stuff. Dude, me either, and I run like 20 different pages, okay? So tell me about it. So what I use is I use post schedulers, okay? And I use two different ones. And then I also, you know, post like regularly like a normal person on the computer. But just so I don't lose my engagement or forget, I schedule it in advance. You know, especially holidays. Think of sitting there at Christmas or New Year's Eve at midnight. Hey, happy New Year. No, like I schedule that on Sunday. Um, <laughs> but Buffer, free scheduler. Um, it schedules your posts. It optimizes your post times. Although I do like to check to see if the times you're optimizing, like say for Facebook, actually correspond to when my people are online. You always want to check that. Computers aren't perfect, you know. Um, it also creates a database of your previous posts for reuse. Now, I don't recommend you, like, you create seven posts and you just keep on reusing it. That's just crazy. You're a robot. But there's some posts that you might want to, like, reuse and then, like, reword what you did. Like, say you're promoting an event. There's only so many different things you're going to say about the event, right? So you're like, you know, you can reuse that one. Um, the other one is Hootsuite. I've been using Hootsuite a lot more because you can have more accounts on Hootsuite as opposed to Buffer, you're only limited to, I think, like maybe 10 or 12. Uh, Hootsuite, again, it's a free scheduler, the scheduling, uh, you get multiple accounts, ability to respond and reply to messages, posts, and tweets right in the app. And uh, the other kind of cool thing is that it, it has a tab for suggested content. So if so you're like, all right, Jeanette, I own this garage, man. I can only write so many times that I have like, you know, a, a cheap, quick lube, tire rotation special going on, and I can only write, you know, um, oil change tips 101 so many times, I don't know what to post. So what's great about having these suggested content tabs on Hootsuite is that you can put, I want to find everything that has content, hashtag automotive, hashtag motorsports, hashtag racing, hashtag NASCAR, hashtag whatever. And it will automatically grab recent news stories or anything that's pertaining to that subject. So then you can look at it like, oh, hey, that relates to my business. Share that. Schedule that out. So it saves a lot of time. It helps you find a lot of different content and maybe things that you didn't even know about. So it's, it's great. Um, again, the other thing we discussed is the insights, the analytics. Google Analytics, if you have a website and you do not have Google Analytics out there, like, man, you got to get with the times. I mean, it's 2017. Um, this is all free data. And I can't stress enough how you don't get a lot of free stuff in this world anymore. Okay? It's the truth. Um, Google Analytics, it's on your website. It can tell you who's visiting, how long they're vis visiting for, what they're looking at, what they search to get there. Um, if they search anything on your website, if they found you on Facebook, you know, and then also if you have a store that's just like, no one's buying from my store, I don't understand, you can look at the drop off. Well, people are coming to my home page, then they're going to page two, then they go and they put items in the store, and then all of a sudden they're gone. Why is that happening? Well, maybe your store is not working. You know, you can like really tailor down different things that are going on. So I encourage you all to use these free tools and uh, collect the data and you can make some informed decisions, test and tweak what works this week, might not work next week, and by looking at the data you can start to predict patterns and trends. Okay?